Section 3.1, we started last time, numeration systems, right? And does anybody remember whose numeration systems we talked about? Very good, Egyptians and Babylonians. And they both had sort of some pluses and some minuses, right? And obviously, overall, we recognize that they weren't efficient or effective systems, or we'd be using them today, right? Okay. So we've got a couple more systems that we're going to take a look at. The first one we're going to look at today is called, or is from the Mayans. They're the ones who predicted the end of the world, or not exactly, but that's how people understood it, right? Yeah. Okay, so the Mayans have three numerals. They have a dot, a line, and this image that looks kind of like a clamshell. Um, the value of a dot is 1, value of a line is 5, and the value of a claim shell is 0, which is fabulous because we ran into problems with not having a 0 with the Babylonians. So we've at least got something of our issues addressed. This is a place value system. It's called a modified base 20. So what does that mean? Well. In the last number system we had that we talked about the Babylonians, they had base 60, which meant the first place was, this, was the ones place, and then we had the 60s place, and then 60 squared, and then 60 cubed, right? We did that. And in our place system, we have the ones place, and then we have the tens, and then we have a 10 squared, and we have a 10 cubed, and so on like that. Okay. Well, the Mayans have something of like, like that, but it's not just 20s. So what does it look like? Well. It's written vertically, so let me make that comment first so that when I write this, it'll make sense. So in our system, the lowest value is on the far right. In their system, the lowest value is on the bottom of the number system. So if you were writing the number 1 as the 1's place, it would be on the bottom of the, of the list of things we're going to write down. So moving from left to right, we're going to be moving from bottom to top, or from top to bottom. So this is the 1's place. And this is a 20s place. And if this were a base 20 system, then it would be 20 squared and 20 cubed and so on, okay? But it's not a base 20 system exactly. The next one, instead of being 20 times 20, is 20 times 18. We'll talk about why in a second. And then after that, you have 20 squared times 18. And we do get powers of 20 after this. We have 20 cubed times 18 all the way up the line. Okay? So it's just this one weird place that is 20 times 18. And we actually alluded to this last time. What is 20 times 18? Grab a calculator if you're not sure. Say it louder for me, Amy. It's 360. And 360 is the approximate number of days in a year. And that's where that 360 is. That's why it's there. It's because of the days of the year context. Okay. Now, the reality is that while that is all well and good, what we really care about is we really care about what each of them are equal to. So this first place value is worth 1. This is the 20s place, so it's worth 20. I'm going to need these in a minute, so we're going to write them down. Y'all told me just 20 times 18 is 360. What happens when I multiply that by another 20? What's 20 squared times 18? 7,200. Okay. And then what's the 20 cubed times 18? $144,000. Okay, so if you have a low value, you know, it's in the value of the ones place, it's on the bottom. If you have something higher than that, you build your way up instead of working your way left like we do. Okay. One more thing that's important to know is that the dots go above the bars within a place value system. For example, if you had the number 6, you'd write it as a bar with a dot on top. It's always with the value that's the bar underneath the value of the dots. So if you had the value um, 12, you'd do two bars with two dots on top. Okay, that's how I would write 12. Okay? So, we're going to look at a value, and we're going to run into a problem almost immediately because we can tell that the dots go above the bars, right? I mean, like, that's what I just said. So we know for sure that right here is a break in place value because that's got bars on top of a dot. So we know the place value has to break there. 
The catch is you don't really know for sure and certain that there's not another place value break. Could the place value also break here? It could, and there's no way for us to know for sure that it doesn't. Um, again, kind of like with the Babylonians, there might have been extra spacing left to try to indicate that, right? So what are we going to do? We are going to only put in the place value breaks that we know for sure and certain are there. We're not going to put any extra that sort of might be there, all right? So you can't, by default, just put in place value breaks everywhere because you're not sure what to do. That's the, th that's the deal. You've got to know for sure where they happen. They for sure happen when you have bars on top of dots, just like I drew the pink line in here. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens then. So the top part of this one is the 20s place, the bottom part is the ones place, right? So imagine now, if you will, that you only have two types of bills in our currency, $1 bills and $20 bills. Can you picture that? No 10s, no 5s, 1s and 20s, that's all you have, okay? so. Again, it looks a little bit funny to write it this way, but tell me, how many ones do you have? Nine. Because there are nine of these guys down here, and this is the ones place, right? How many twenties do you have? Seven. Because there are seven dart, dots and bars up here. Bar, two dots, that's seven. Okay? So the counting of it is a little bit weird, you know, dart, dots and bars, but we still have nine, we have seven. Okay. Which one's the bigger one? The one that's on top, the one that's on bottom? The one that's on top is bigger, the one that's on bottom is smaller. So, the first question asks us, which Maya numeral comes before this value? Well, coming before means taking one away. I need to take a dot away. From where? The bottom. Because the bottom dots are my ones place. So, the two dots on top stay. The line stays, and I have three dots that stay on bottom with the line. The number that comes before removes a dot from the bottom, right? So if I actually wrote this out again, I would have seven here and eight here, right? I removed one. Okay, we're going to talk about the sevens and the eights in a minute, but how about coming after this digit? Okay, so on the bottom, okay, on the top I still have two dots and a bar, and on the bottom I have two bars. That should look weird, because that should look like something else it could be. What other number could that be? 17. Bars worth five. How do I know for sure if this is what's drawn that there's really that vertical pink bar, I'm sorry, that horizontal pink bar in between them? I don't have that for sure knowing that it is now, right? Maybe there's some extra space there. Maybe I have a pretty good feeling that it should be there, but I don't actually know. So the way that that is actually written, it could be the number, what did we say? 17. Um, or even worse, what if I did, and this is again like what we were saying before, what if I just put all the pink bars that are possible in? Technically, I could do that because I don't know for sure that there's not one there, right? I mean, that's even worse. But at the very least, this problem could be the number 17 now, and that's a problem. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to actually turn this number into our number system. So we already wrote down that these are worth 7 and 9 here, right? That's where we were before. So what do we do? Well, the 7 is in what place value? 20s, so we do 7 times 20, plus the 9 is in what place values? The 1s, so we do 9 times 1. So 7 times 20 would be 140, plus the 9 times 1 would give you 149. What you guys think? It's doable, right? It's weird though, isn't it? And we got this whole written vertically thing, and we've got these bars and dots that there's no for sure place where we break them apart. It's a little weird. All right, so we're going to take one number now in our number system and turn it into Mayan. This is going to feel like what we did last time with the Babylonians. We're going to do a division algorithm, and this is why we wrote out all of these place values over here for what they are. 
So if you look at this list, 144,000, 7,200, 360, 20, and 1, which of these numbers is big enough but not too big to go into 58,532? The 7,200. So, we're going to take the 58,532 and we're going to divide it by 7,200. And you're going to use your calculator. I know it's always been your like best friend, but it's your new best friend too. You're going to like using it. All right, so take 58,532, divide by 7,200, and tell me what you get for the whole number part first. Eight. And then you're going to multiply eight times 7,200 to give you what? 57,600. Fabulous. And then we subtract. So when we subtract these, what do we get? What was it? That I heard somebody say. 932? Does that look okay? Okay. We can't skip any values, so what's the next value underneath 7,200? 360. All right, so what's 932 divided by 360? Two. Two times 360 is 720. And then we subtract 932 minus 720. 212. What's our next place value under the 360? 20. So how many 20s are there in 212? 10. 10 times 20 is 200, leaving me with 12. And my last place value is a value of 1. I always go all the way down to 1, never skipping. This goes in 12 times, which leaves me with a remainder of 0. Even if you've gotten a remainder of 0 before now, you keep going until you get all the way to the bottom, dividing by 1. Okay? I don't really think I needed that. That was fine. Okay. We've really done the hard work now, okay? All that division algorithm is the hard work. The easy part is the actually writing it in their numerals for this number system anyway. So how do I write a number 8 in their number system? Three dots and a line, and what goes on top, the dots or the lines? The dots. So I write three dots with a line. That's the number 8. What's the number 2? Two? two dots. What's the number 10? two lines and that should concern you in this number already because I've got dots above lines and it just all of a sudden makes it look like I have fewer place values than I thought I did. That's not our problem. We didn't create the number system. Okay? So it's all right. How do I get what's my last number? 12. Two lines and two dots, which looks a lot like the two lines and the two dots above, but it's not supposed to be. Right? Good job, Mayans. So we're done anyway at this point. Yes? Where does the zero Yeah, let's say that we had done this division algorithm that where the 8, 2, 10, and 12 are, and one of them had been zero. If that were your case, you would put a, a claim shell in there for that place value instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not as good as, say, having like a comma, right? That would be nice. Like that's how if we had a comma, we could actually break in a, some sort of version of a comma. We could break something apart to actually see that the two dots and the two lines that are in the middle of this particular number are somehow separated into place values, and we can't see that right now. But. All right, last numeration system. You all ready? You kind of have seen this one before, though. This one is not all brand new. All right, so let's see what you remember, though. What's the value of the first numeral? One. How about the value of V? 5, the value of x, 10. And then you might be sort of getting a little bit stuck because we see the, less, the rest of them less frequently. You were about to tell me what it was, though, Amy. It's 50, yeah. Does anybody know what c is? 
it's 100. Does anybody notice a pattern? The next one's actually 500 and then 1,000. All of their numerals have fives or tens in them, right? Yeah, okay. Um, I can't remember if I said this last time, but you do not need to memorize any of these number systems. You don't even need to put them on your note card. I give them to you on the test, just so you know. Okay, so I don't tell you what they're all worth. Um, actually, what are they? How do I give them to you? I don't know. I tell you what they're worth. I don't tell you how their place value systems work. So, like, I won't say, um, you know, the Babylonians is place 60. I won't tell you Mayans are written vertically. I won't tell you all the details about their place value system. I'll just give you these charts. So these charts that you have in your notes, they'll actually show up on another sheet of paper that you'll get for your test. Okay, let's talk about the Roman numerals, though. They have two very interesting properties. The first one you've probably seen before, um, maybe not it's in full, you know, not fully the way we're going to talk about today, but you have seen it before. It's called the subtraction property. To avoid repeating a symbol more than three times, a smaller value is placed in front of a larger one. Only one value smaller may appear before a larger value. This property affects nines and fours, or fours and nines. So if we wanted to write 90, one way that we would have thought maybe to do it prior to me telling you there's a subtraction property is to do a 50 and four tens. That would be 90, right? But if I did that, I'd have to write the 10 four times. They never write a digit four times. So what do they do instead? They do a subtraction property. So 90 is almost 100, agreed? Okay, 100. How do you write 100? It's C. But we want it to be 10 less than that. How do you write a 10? X. So the X goes in front of the C. X can go in front of C's and X can go in front of L's. X can't go in front of anything else. Okay, it's always got to be one place value system less. For example, 99. Man, I would love it if we could write a C with a I in front. That is not what they do. I know, it's a bum, right? So what do they do? Well, they treat this as 90 plus 9. So how do you write a 90? Well, we just did it. It's XC. How do you write a 9? IX. X is 10, I in front of it makes it 9. You have to remember, we didn't make the rules. <laughs> and I'm not making them up either. We're doing the rules the way they did them. Okay? All right, so there's one more property, and you may not have encountered this one before. This is a multiplication property. So you might have looked at that and said, okay, I can go up to 1,000, and maybe I even have some sort of sense of how this attraction stuff works, but what if the number's bigger than that? What do I do? Well, if you have a number that's bigger than that, you need the multiplication property. So a bar is placed over a Roman numeral to multiply it by 1,000. A double bar multiplies it by a million, which is 1,000 times 1,000, okay? That's why it's double. It's 1,000 twice. For example, 9,000. Okay, so anytime you see something with the thousands, almost always you're just going to look at the number in front and you're going to write it. How do I write a 9? IX. How do I make the 9 9,000? I put a bar over it. And this would be true for anything bigger than 3,000, right? Because 3,000 I can write it with three, what was it, M's. Okay, but if I needed 4,000, I'd have to do four M's and we never write things four times. So once we get to 4,000, this thing kicks in. Yes? What interesting is people, like when they're writing around numerals, will often put a bar on the top and bottom of the back of the They do, but they don't do it for that reason. Their bars look right. different. They actually look like they're connecting them. These don't touch. This bar that we're writing is above. It's like hovering above. Okay. Yeah. People put the bar on top and bottom. Like, did it come from that? Even though that's not I have no about. idea. Okay. Yeah, I have no idea. I think it has to do more with typesetting of what you see used. I don't think it has anything to do with the mathematics behind it, though. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do a couple things now with Roman numerals. All right. So 
Anyway, we're looking at kind of like we looked at the last ones, what comes before, what comes after. All right, so coming before means removing something from the smallest value that's there. So at the very end of this thing, there is an x. How much is an x worth? 10. So if I turn the 10 into a 9, what would that look like? You would put an i before the x. Everything else in front stays the same. So the MCM doesn't change, and then it would be ix. That's how I would remove a 1 from that numeral. What would I do to add a 1 to get the number after it? Yeah, we'd move the i or we'd put the i on the other side. We'd put the i after the x. And that becomes then like the number 11 at the end, right? 10 plus 1. What is this value in Hindu Arabic? And that's our system, M C M X. Well, I find it easiest to actually write some of these out so that if you made a mistake and I think, oh, I see why they made a mistake, I can give you partial credit. How much is M worth? A thousand. How much is the C worth? One hundred. How much is the M worth? A thousand. We already did that, right? How much is the X worth? Ten. All right, so anytime you have a smaller value in front of a larger value, you've got a subtraction property going on. We have that here, right? There's a C in front of an M. There's a 100 in front of a 1,000. So this place value right here is a subtraction property. 100 is before a 1,000, uh, a, a so that's 900. The value in front of it is already a 1,000. So this is a 1,000. You don't necessarily have to write it out in this value the way I am, but I just do want you to recognize that the 1,000 at the beginning plus the 900 in the middle plus the 10 at the end. So this is the value 1910, which starts to look and feel a little bit like a date. So where have you seen Roman numerals used? Okay, so Greek mythology. Where else? Outlines. Yep. Somebody said clocks. Yes. Has anybody ever visited the East Coast? Super Bowl, except they didn't this year because they were weird. Did you know that? Do you know what the Super Bowl's number was this year? Did anybody keep up with it? It was 50, so what should it have been? L. They didn't like it because it didn't have enough digits. They just put 50. I know, it's not cool at all. Um, there, was, there was all kinds of debate about it, actually. My husband was the one who told me because I had no idea, but interesting stuff. Um, buildings on the East Coast, um, older buildings, will often have the established date of the building in Roman numerals. Um, the church that my brother-in-law got married in, it had um, the date established because it was so old. It was a cool, cool old Presbyterian church. Um, no, I have no idea. It was in the 1700s, though. Yeah, and it was an amazing building. So you'll see that sometimes as well. Um, you'll see it on Olympics. Um, you'll see it on Super Bowls. You'll see it on clocks. So there's lots of places Roman numerals are still used today, and of course, all the other ones you guys mentioned. Um, all right, we have one more Roman numeral question. It's a fun one. It's really big. Yeah. Still today? Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. They've got more issues. Uh, the Roman numeral system is actually pretty good. Um, it's not. It's not awful, right? Um, it's not as convenient to use, but it doesn't have sort of the inherent flaws of the other ones. One of the things it doesn't have is it doesn't have a zero. You know, so if you subtract and you get nothing, I'm not sure what they do about that, um, but um, they don't have that symbol. So um, it does have some sort of you know subtraction, multiplication sort of complications, especially the subtraction ones. Is it, It's a little bit confusing. It's not awful, but it's a little bit weird. You know, that part of it's a little bit awkward. All right, this number has a break in place value at the commas right here. 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? The part after this, though, 19, is where we're going to start. How would I write 19? Okay, so the 10, this is actually like having 10 and 9, right? I would write a 10 as x, and then I would write a 9 as ix. That's the 19. Is that okay? Okay. 1492. I can put all of that together in one symbol. 
I know that there's a millions place on this, but it's just one million. So I'm going to group the 1492 like it's all together. I can write that. How do I get, if I just had the number 1,492, how would I get 1,000 M? How would I get 400? C, D, right? Because I've got 500 and 100 less than that. So we're going number by number. 1,000 is M. 400 is CD. 90, the 9 there, the number 90. How do I get 90? X, C. We did that one already, right? X, C. And then how do I get the 2? I, I. But all of that value is really in the millions, right? So we do, we do one bar actually over it. Because if I took 1,492 and I multiplied it by 1,000, I would end up with 1,492,000, which is exactly what I want it to be. Yes, only the line over the part that came before the comma. Why? Because I didn't actually multiply the 19 at the end by 1,000. It's just 19. So only the part that's multiplied by 1,000, basically only the part that's in the thousands place gets the bar over it. And the thousands place is starting with the 2. All of this is in the thousands place because the 2 is in the thousands place. So we end up with this numeral. How about some visuals? Visuals. I wish I brought my box with me. I will bring it next time, or I'll try to remember anyway. Um, what are the really nice visuals for base um, block um, or base combinations of things, addition, subtraction, and so forth, are base 10 blocks. Um, I have base 10 blocks in my office. There's nothing special about base 10, it's just that that's the base we use, okay? So base 10 blocks, we have four different values we're going to use. The first one is the units value. So it looks like a little bitty square. Or it's a little bitty um, cube, actually. When I bring it here, you'll see it's a cube, a little bitty cube. A long looks like a long one of those. What it really is, is it, if I'm in base 10, is it's 10 of them stuck together, like Legos. All right, if I, if I had one little Lego as the unit's place, then I have 10 Legos, that's a long, okay? A flat is a long on the top, a long on the side, looks like that. So it sort of looks like three dimensions at that point. I'm sorry, two dimensions at that point. Got an extra dimension on there. And then a block, okay, that wasn't good. Let's try this again. I'm running off my page, so just humor me. There we go. There's my block. It's three-dimensional cube. Big, fat thing. So here's the deal. A unit is the value 1. A long is the value 10 because it's 10 units long. A flat is 10 on one side, 10 on the other. So how much is it worth? 100. It's 10 by 10 multiplication. A block has a third dimension to that that's another 10, so what would it be worth? A thousand. And there's nothing special about the 10. I could have, and I do have, and I'll bring you base 3 blocks. All base 3 blocks are is that I have the units, it's worth 1. A long is worth 3 because there's 3 of them stuck together. A flat is worth three on the top, three on the side. I have a square with nine in it. And if I add a third dimension, I multiply by three again and I get 27. Okay? All of these are is our powers of our base system, whatever base system we're working in. And what they allow kids to do, especially when they're looking at addition to begin with, is they start to recognize that when we do our number, for instance, if I had 432. I can't add the 4 and the 3 and the 2. That doesn't make sense. They're in different place value systems. And if I'm working with blocks, I can see that. Because I have a hundreds block, 
and I've got four of them. And I have three of the next block down, the longs, and I, I can't combine a long and a flat. That doesn't make sense. Visually, they're not the same object, and so they're not able to be combined. So we're going to do an example here of what we do with base 8. In base 8, how much would each of these things be worth? I'll start for you. A unit is always worth 1. How much would a long be worth in base 8? Eight. 8. How much would a flat be worth in base 8? 64. That's 8 times 8. And how much would a block be worth in base 8? Yeah, 8 times 8 times 8, which is 512. Y'all with me? Look good? Just powers of 8, right? Let's do now a power of 8 block set. We have 2, 3, 7. It says considering manipulatives, how many units would 2, 3, 7 base 8 be? Well, this 2, this 3, and this 8 mean different things. They're in the different place value system. So this is the ones place. You know, the units, the single little ones. This is three longs, but how much is a long worth? Eight. So this is three that are eight long. This two is in the flats place, but how much is a flat worth? 64. So it's two blocks that are 64, you know, long and wide. So I actually have two 64s. I have three eights. And I have seven ones. What do I get if I add all of that together? Hundred and fifty nine. Hundred and fifty nine. So in other words, if I sat down and I counted every single little block on the faces of these objects, I'd have a hundred and fifty nine individual little blocks the way that we count in our place system. Base, I'm sorry, question B above is equivalent to asking what would 237 base 8 be in base 10? And that's what we're doing next. So, let's take a look at other base systems. We talked about last time in our base system we have 10 digits. What's the smallest one? Zero. What's the biggest one? Nine. Okay? So there is no 10 in base 10, right? Not as a single digit. It's a two-digit number, base 10. Base 3. How many digits do you think there are in base 3? How many were there in base 10? 10. Zero to nine. So how many are there in base 3? Three. Ten digits in base 10, three digits in base 3. How many digits in base 7? Seven? 7. How many in base 12? 12. Whatever the base is, that's how many digits we have. Okay? So what are they? Well, if it's like our system, it better start with 0. Base 10, we start with the digit 0. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9. How many can I go up in base 3? Well, only 3. So 0, 1, 2. There is no 3 in base 3. Okay? No 3s in base 3, just like there's no 10 in base 10. There's no single digit 10 in base 10. All right? So what would we have to do? I mean, what do we do in base 10 when we run out of our single digits? We combine them into two-digit numbers, and then three-digit numbers, and then four-digit numbers, right? What is the first two-digit number in base 10? 10. It's actually a 1 and then followed by a 0. That's also the first two-digit number in any base. I need two digits. What's the smallest two-digit number? Well, it's a 1 in the left place and nothing in the right place. What would come after 1? And we don't read that number as 10, by the way. When we're working with these, we will read that number as 1, 0, okay? Because it's not 10. We're in a wrong base system for it to be 10. It's the number 1, 0. 
what would come after one zero before that? One one. What's after one one? One two. And then two zero. Because I've run out of digits. Every time I run out of digits, I've got to use something bigger in another place value. What would come out? We're going to do like three more here. What comes after two zero? Two one and then two two and then right. I don't have any bigger number in three dig in two digits, so I now need three digits one zero zero. And we can keep going, right? There's there's no end in sight, just like with our value system, no end in sight. Let's try base seven. How many digits are there in base seven? Seven. Where do we start? Zero. And how far up will we go? Six. All right. Ah. There we go. What do you suppose come after six? One zero. And then one one until I get to what? One six. And then what would happen next? Two zero all up to two six, three zero up to three six, and so forth. Okay? No sevens in base seven. Base twelve's different. Why is base twelve different? Because twelve is already a two digit number the way we interpret it, right? So what do we do instead? Well, I'm gonna show you what your book does. Um, other books do different things. But we're going to have 0 up to 9. But of course, that's only 10 digits, and I'm supposed to have 12 digits, right? Some books will start using letters of the alphabet, A, B, C. That's actually what I prefer. I think that works a little bit better. What your book does is your book uses T for 10 and E for 11. And if you needed to go any higher base, like into to it having a 12, you, there's no 12 in base 12, right? So I don't need to go any higher here. But if I were doing, say, base 13, where I did have a 12, it would use a W. That's as high as your book actually refers to them, okay? Don't like this. I would rather use letters of the alphabet, just going in order A through, you know, F or something like that. But we're going to go with what your book does, T-E. What do you suppose comes after E? One zero, all the way up to one nine. What do you think comes after one nine? One T, and then one E, and then two zero, and we could keep going. Okay, all that's well and good, but what are we going to do with it? Well... I'm kind of going to do the same thing we did with all those ancient people, all of their numeration systems. Oh, I never actually talked about the Mayans. I just kind of glossed it. Why do you think they used base 20? No, it's not because they're stupid, Lauren. Why do you think they used base 20? Because they Yes, and they did not wear closed-toed shoes, don't you suspect? Think about what you know about ancient civilizations, right? Sandals and things like that. They saw their toes. Yeah? There's the base 20. Yeah, I forgot to mention it. I thought it was kind of fun. All right, it's so why we use base 10. Little 10 little digits on the end of your hands, right? 10. All right, these questions are asking for, like we did with the number systems, the number before, the number after, okay? So we haven't talked about 5 and 12 in the sense of these big numbers, so we're going to figure out what happens next. All right, so what would come before 1, 4, base 5? And what would come after it? So let's start with the before. What comes before 1, 4? 1, 3. Notice, I'm writing the subscript out in words beside it, 5. You need that there. If it's not there, it's assumed to be base 10. And it's not supposed to be base 10 because you're working in base 5. So 1, 3, base 5. What comes after 1, 4? What is it? 2, 0. Because there is no 5. I can't do 1, 5. I don't have a 5 in base 5. 
So I've run out of digits, so I have to sort of round up, you know, go up to up the next value system, or up the next place value. That one goes to a 2, so this is 2, 0, base 5. 12, base 12 anyway. So the number in the middle here is T00 zero, zero, base 12. And I'm actually going to do the number after first because it's the easier one. What comes after 200? Zero, zero? T00, zero, zero, sorry. What was it? T01. T01 base 12. What happens when you do the number of four? Okay, so what is the value, let's write these out. What is the value T as a number? T is 10, and then we've got these zeros here. So I need to decrease the 10 by one. So what comes before 10? Nine, so we are gonna have a nine. But it's not nine nine next. It's EE -E because E is the biggest single digit number in their place system. It's what we do in our place system too when we take the number say, um, you know, 5,000 and we take away one. Well, we turn the five into a four and then we make all the zeros the biggest number we have in our place value system which is nines. But the biggest number in this place value system is actually E. So we use E's there. And then of course we write the 12 at the end. 9E -E base 12. Okay, the last thing we're going to do with these guys is to convert in and out of them, just like we did with the historical systems, right? Taking their number and turning it into ours, taking our number and turning it into theirs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert from base whatever into base 10. I want you to write this in big as bold as you can, or multiply is the key. Circle it, highlight it big caps, I don't care. If you move from somebody else's system into our system, you are going to be multiplying. Okay? Going to be multiplying. So here's the image. We will do this with, I think we have the same, well, we have one different number. Here we go. We have all of these values in all of these number systems, but they all have a specific number associated with them. So I'm going to spread them out a little bit, and we're going to write underneath them the place value in which they lie. This is base 2, which means this is the ones place. What are all the place values in base 2 going to be? 2 to some value, right? So this place is the 2's place, 2 to the 1. This one would be 2 squared, and this one would be 2 cubed. You guys with me? Powers of 2. Whatever base you're working in, it's powers of that base. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the number times the base value. So we do 1 times 2 cubed. We're going to do 0 times 2 squared, and we're going to keep going all the way. 0 times 2 squared plus 0 times 2 to the first, plus 1 times 1 at the end. Lots of zeros in this one, so we don't have to worry so much about those, but what is 1 times 2, or what is 2 cubed? It's 8. So we have 8 times the 1 at the beginning, that's 8. And then we have this one here at the end. This is the fancy way of writing the number 9. Does anybody, does anybody know where base 2 is used? It's really used in real life. Computers. Computer programming uses base 2 um, because they can use switches if they're either on or off in the number of the switches. Does anybody else know what, does anybody know what else computer science uses besides base 1 or base 2? They use base 16. We're not talking about base 16, but they do use base 16. It's actually called hexadecimal. Hex means six, decimal means ten, so it's base sixteen. It's also used in computer science. Okay, it's another one that's used. All right, let's do the next one. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna spread them out. Um, we have zeros here and here, and I know this t is a t, but the t value is ten. Green doesn't want to write today. Okay, 
This is base 12, so these are all powers of 12. It's 12 to the 1, 12 squared. So we have 10, because it's t, times 12 squared. <coughs> Plus 0 times 12. I'm going to write the zeros out just so that you guys see them. You don't have to write them out. And 0 times 1. So we just need to multiply, in this case, 10 times 12 squared. So what is 10 times 12 times 12? 1,440. Does that look good? Phenomenal. So when we're moving from someone else's place value system into ours, we multiply. Okay. When we're moving from ours into theirs, we will divide. It's all about division. And we will use that wonderful division scaffolding that we used with the other place value systems as well. It's very handy. Okay. So, here's the image you want to have in mind. Somebody comes in and they dump on the floor 11,028 crayons. It's hateful, I know, and you're like, oh my word, there's 11,028 crayons on the floor, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna put them into groups of certain sizes. That's really what the division scaffolding does, is it puts them into groups of certain sizes. And it depends on the size, depending on the base that we're wanting to use. So we're doing base four. In order to know the sizes of our groups, we need to know what the powers of four are. And I'm gonna write them backwards from right to left because that's where they're gonna be when we write them down later anyway. So I've got the ones place, I've got the fours place, and then I need four squared. What is four squared? 16. And then I need four cubed, which is 64. And then I need four to the fourth. So somebody's gonna have to help me out now that we get too big. 256. And then I need four to the fifth. 1,000, what was it, Amy? 24. We're keeping going until we get something close to 11,000 or bigger than 11,000. So what's the next one? 4096. What would the next one be just for kicks? And that's too big. Why? It's bigger than the number I'm working with, which was 11,000. So I don't need that one. This list of numbers now is the list of divisors that you have in your division scaffolding, and you need to use all of them in the scaffolding as you go. So you have 4096, and you're dividing it into the 11,028. So you're going to make how many groups of 4,096? I mean, that's the question you're asking. So when you do the division, Amy says I get two. And then Amy, what's the two times the 4096? And then we subtract, and we get 2836. Is that good? And then we go down the list. What's next on our, on our list? 1024. So how many times will 1024 go into 2836? Two times. Two times two, uh, two multiplied by 10, uh, 1024 is 2048. And if we subtract, what do we get? 700 something, right? 788. What's our next power of two, or four? 256. How many times will 256 go into 788? Three. Finally, something that's not two. What is three times 256? 768. And now is where it feels a little bit awkward. This subtracts to 20 can't skip anything. What's, le what's one power less than 256? 64. And 64 goes into 20 how many times? Zero. That's okay. We just put it in zero times and we're going to carry down our 20. Okay? So don't, don't skip him. He needs to be there. That zero is part of the discussion. What value is after dividing by 64? 
16. How many 16s are there in 20? 1. 1 times 16 is 16. I subtract and I get 4. 4 is actually my next value. Divide and I get 1. It's awfully tempting to stop because I've got a 0, but I never stop until I've divided by 1. Obviously, dividing by 1 at the end gives me 0. Totally cool, not a problem, but that 0 is needed. It's a place value. It's a placeholder. So our solution, and here's what's the coolest thing about the division scaffolding, it's right here. It's this list of numbers written from left to right. So our answer is 2, 2, 3, 0, 1, 1, 0. And what am I missing? The base 4. So I need to write down here as a subscript in words 4. And this is the solution to the question. Nope, there's no commas. Um, they, are, they aren't used, right. All right.